Hi everyone, this is Shepard with another episode number three of Ask Shepard for April 24th, 2014. I'm just going to answer some questions that I've received over a number of videos, uh, primarily from the Ask Shepard videos. So if you're looking for the best place to post it for me to read it and possibly answer it, please post it under this video. Deco Tree asks, do you know if getting rid of the feral blight is reliant on how much damage you do to the monster or how many hits you get in? For example, if a greatsword user got the blight, would it be better for them to try using charge attacks or instead use overhead side swipe combo to continuously? Well, I did a little bit of testing just like this, and so here are the results. All right, so we're going to be testing out the virus mechanics. Namely, the question, does it matter more on how much damage you do, or is it a matter of how many hits you do? And I'm going to be using one very, very powerful weapon. And I'm going to be using one very, very weak weapon. And we're just going to assume that through the number of hits, if one suddenly comes off a lot faster, then we'll know. If it's roughly the same, then we'll also know. Okay, so I've got virus. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, I may have eight, about eight. All right, so uh, I'm not really going to dwell on that too much. It was about eight attacks with this very, very powerful greatsword. I had a variety of attacks there. But uh, even if they weren't the most powerful of attacks, the next greatsword I'm going to use is going to be so incredibly weak in comparison that the only option that we'll have say it uses 10 or 12 attacks or 16 attacks if it's even roughly close to seven or eight then we'll know that the damage itself does not matter okay so here's a weapon that will do at least half as much damage it just barely has green sharpness and it has under 300 attack I'm just gonna wait for him to virus us oh there's there's a little puddle right there. Okay, so we're virus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm going to assume that damage itself makes no real difference. Uh, seeing as the other one was about 8 and this was about 9. Doesn't make any difference at all, just the number of times you hit. Which makes sense. It would almost be too overpowered if you could just hit something with one really powerful great charge and get all of your virus taken away. Alright, so that solves that question. Okay, so I know I just recorded the answer to this question, but I wanted to test out something else as kind of like an addendum. So what I found through this little test video that you're going to see right now is while it may not matter how much damage you're actually doing to the monster, what does matter is what's the base damage of the attack that you're using on them. For example, of course, a level 3 greatsword charge is going to do much more base damage than, of course, a slap. Likewise, uh... You know, a slap, you know, you might be able to get two or three slaps out at the same time you get out a level three gate charge. In, in any case, if you're looking to activate Feral Blight as soon as possible, just do the attacks that are going to do the most damage. Uh, don't focus on the number of hits, just the most damaging ones. So you'll see, even though it took me longer than in the other videos, because uh, 
maybe I wasn't being all that good at it, uh, I was able to activate Feral Affinity in only five hits. Uh, that's because these were actual greatsword charges, not just draw slashes, combo swings, and other things like that. Something to note, though, is if you always want to kind of find out what a good combo may be, inflict yourself with Feral Blight and see how quickly you can get out of it. And the faster you're getting out, the better off you are at utilizing the weapon's attacks. Morganator asks, does elemental ammo really break off things easier? Well, it's a little bit of a complicated question, and it kind of goes back to the damage formula. In general, just about everything takes more raw damage than it does elemental damage. Generally speaking, elemental damage is just a little bonus in addition to whatever else you're doing. However, there are some monsters, Gravios and Bezeros in particular, who actually are very resistant to normal raw damage until you've broken certain parts. In cases like this, bombs and elemental damage really shine, in the sense that because you're doing a comparatively large amount of elemental damage compared to what you would normally be doing with raw damage, you really want to find weapons that are able to inflict that element until you've broken them or found another raw weak point that you can be attacking. In general though, especially for things like Raytheon's Head or other Tails, elemental damage makes uh, no real uh, you know, major difference in terms of breaking things. It's just there for additional damage. Don Bionicle asks, What do you think about the new Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate trailer? Comments or concerns? Well, for one, it's pretty amazing that we're getting an actual desert area back, and two, that you can now launch and combo other players. That's probably one of the most interesting things you can do during a fight. Uh, there are oftentimes players that insist that upswinging another player will actually help them, and now there's actually a chance for that to become an actual strategy. Uh, I can kind of have a vision in my head of four greatsword users, one upswinging the other three into the monster, resulting in three jump attacks. That could be a lot of damage. Um, I guess my only concern is that might actually become a little overpowered. As for concerns, there are none really. I mean, this is kind of bog standard for what you get for a G update. Just about every monster is going to end up getting some sort of subspecies. And as a result, we're going to see a lot more guys. So, the 4 has a very large cast already. I expect to see a subspecies for just about everything, or at least I hope to see a subspecies for everything. Probably a return of almost all the Elder Dragons, so we can probably see Camellios as well. Uh, I don't have any really any major concerns. Um, it's, it should still have the same infrastructure, internet connectivity as the other games. I guess the only thing I'd kind of like to see is if they're going to add an, an, yet another weapon type on top of the Charge Blade or Bug Staff. I would imagine not, because we probably would have heard or seen some sort of rumors uh, by now. But if that does happen, uh, consider me really excited. Kono Ama asks, Can you ride on a monster during its flight animation? This isn't really a complicated question, but it's kind of hard to answer in the sense that, no, um, that's not really how the ride mechanic works. Uh, generally speaking, two things have to happen. Uh, one, you have to be hitting the monster with a jumping attack. And two, you have to be at some sort of angle where you're above the monster when you hit them. So, certainly if you're using the bug staff and you're doing some sort of leaping attack, you, even with a flying monster, you can get above them. But the third and more important thing is that when the monster lands, you have to be close enough to them so that the ride animation will trigger. Um, you'll see sometimes during some of my fights and other videos on YouTube where it looks as if a ride is almost initiated, but it doesn't actually happen. The monsters are struggling on the ground. That's because the hunter was not close enough to the monster to actually initiate the ride itself. Okay, so there you go. You can see that I was able to knock her out of the hair. And then, once I landed next to her, the ride initiated. And then it's just business as normal. Ride. Destroy. Leonel Calvia asks, When a monster is leaping and it's poisoned, will the poison damage nullify the health they regain when sleeping and leave them at 1 HP, or will they regain health fast enough to nullify the poison? Well, without being a developer, there's really no way to know uh, exactly how much 
life they're losing from poison, and how much life they're regaining from sleeping. What I can say is, generally speaking, poison does not last long enough on a monster for them to have been inflicted with it and limp and go to sleep and be sleeping at the same time. You may have gotten them to 1 HP and then have them sleep and have recover HP in that way, but it's unlikely to uh, completely nullify the health that they would have restored. Uh, I'm thinking the only thing that might be a small you know, counterpoint to that might be something like Uragon or Durham Boros. But even then, I, I highly doubt that it would last long enough to do any sort of significant difference with that. Good question, interesting question. Um, but I would not use poison as a way to uh, laze around when something is sleeping. As an addition to this question, it is interesting to note that um, from what I've noticed, sleep inflicted by players does not cause the monster to regain life. Only when they go to sleep naturally do they actually regain life. So I used to be in a huge hurry whenever I would sleep bomb things like, ah, I gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Worried that of course the monster is regaining health, but I do not, uh, I do not believe that it is the case. All right, so thanks for watching. Uh, the only question I would like to ask you is if you have not yet subscribed or liked my videos, uh, I think I'll do this once a week with this video. Um, please do that. It really does help out and it really encourages me to continue to make more videos on this channel. Uh, of course, as always, you can also check out the Teamwork Cast channel. A lot more variety there. Again, you're going to get a lot of things with either board games or Christian doing things, Dark Souls, Let's Play, Crusader King things, things like that. So, until next time, this is Shepard saying good luck and have a good hunt.